Hello, cadets. How are all, all my uh, hey, juniors out there? Or of C next gen. I am Commander Devin Lineheart. As post on the stream today. Not the stream, but Twitch shot Twitter. Tonight's chat is going over not the stream, but the e the overall thoughts in history of Mega Man and if we can see a possible future with the franchise. Without further ado. I'm gonna be frank. I know oh, possibly we're gonna have trouble. I've made it quite clear on Twitter slash X with anyone in the Mega Man community if they show up and do anything to endanger the welfare of this live stream, there will be repercussions. This is obviously a retrospect of my history and feelings on Mega Man and the Mega Man community. This stream will be a part of four segments. Segment one, the history of Mega Man. Segment two, my history with the Blue Bomber and my gaming prowess of knowledge and history. Part three, very simply put, Can we expect a new game from Capcom anytime soon? Step four, my thoughts on the Mega Man community. And can any good be seen from them? Not only for collaborative efforts on my end, but any VTs in. Can peace be achieved? Well, that's a big question, isn't it? Can peace be a tweet between me and the Mega Man Online community? We'll find out tonight. After a certain incident I jumped into, they got in their heads that I am the absolute worst individual ever. That I'm beyond redemption, and even more so, Beyond hope. I'm going to be frank. When it comes to them, you literally care less. Because they are the way they are. One way or another, we're about to get the stream underway. We're gonna put the announcement on Twitter slash. Announcement was just sent. Here we go. Hopefully, some people will join the stream here in a few minutes. But until then, we'll run some music. Now I want to talk about a few things. Oh, my PC moved that way. So. Number one. I'm glad to announce. That my dragon muffin has returned to base. 
is here. As of right now, I want her to say a few words. Dragon Muffin, can you come here? Dragon Blossom, can you come here? Very well. Now, overall, how excited are you for you finally going to appear July 20th on the overall all affiliated live streams and content? And how do you feel about finally yeah, having your time to shine? Amazing. Looking forward to Okay, very good, very good. Overall, I want um, to have your honest opinion. When it comes to you, what we are to expect from you, uh, live streaming with your debut on July 12th, alongside your, or uh, obviously, fiance and future husband. What can we expect from you that day? I wonder. Honestly, I don't know. I am looking forward to it. I'm hoping I live up to everything. That's all we can ask for. That's all we can ask for at this moment in time. Once your debut happens on July 12th, in the next couple of weeks, a few things will all be shown. One, your seed personnel file will be leaked in five days and shown on the YouTube channel. And what they can see how powerful you are and your characteristics and personality. Even more so, your origin comic will be made known on the Discord a week early before hitting Twitter. Meaning that in the second week, I will be hard at work at her overall origin comic for all of y'all to see. It will be out on that of the Discord first before it hits Twitter slash X. My beloved, um... Understanding you're having communications trying to contact you right now. Why don't you con uh, answer that um, important call and the waiting room? Okay. Thank you so much. All right. So what you just heard there was my beloved. She is finally here and she will be joining in the streaming services and content on July 12th. My beloved Rachel, my Dragon Blossom, the glorious flame to my blade has come home. Now, with all that now mentioned and out of the way, let's get started. <clears throat> Mega Man. When did it begin? All good legends start art from a humble beginnings. Before we go into Mega Man though, we need to talk about Capcom. Capcom itself was an arcade affiliated company before it went to the Nintendo console market. The arcade industry is where its roots truly lie, where it thrived and became something more. At the time, there was one console called the Atari. Many Ataris came out, but eventually in Japan, a new system was developed, known as the Famicom. The Famicom was revolutionary in Japan. It was a new system that made the Atari look like compared to that of a, <clears throat> well, an IBM computer compared to that of these days. You're, I'm literally comparing an IBM computer from the 1990s to that 
of the modern day computers capabilities of this day. In retrospect, the Atari was about to be replaced. In 1985, Capcom needed a mascot, an image, something to bring their overall legacy to a new era of gaming. As the arcades were doing great for them, they started making game, porting the games over to Nintendo, but their games were suffering. They were not selling and making them money. They thought to themselves, what can we do to stand out from the crowd? All of our previous games are lacking, and even that, not living up to the legacy that we want to submit. They looked at something, something called Astro Boy, and the robot genre as a whole. They thought, what if we create our own Astro Boy? What if we create a game from robots and one that is meant to save humanity while others attack? The concept of the ground was being made. This was called in Japan, Rockman. But globally, he would be known as Mega Man, the Blue Bomber. Mega Man in 1985 had come out in the US. A few years prior, the Famicom became the Nintendo. And Mega Man became the face of a company. When the first Mega Man game came out, people were overjoyed. They got their first taste of Mega Man, but the game struggled. I'm not going to lie. For a lot of modern gamers these days, the original Mega Man is still considered one of the hardest Nintendo games to ooh, beat and or play. Because... Ombudsman level is considered to be one of the most difficult of the game. Due to the glitchy first few parts of the stage and men and parts of the stage. As it's notoriously known to make Mega Man go Meow, 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 meow. Literally just fall to his death. The Guts Men stage is considered one of the most unpredictable and harder for a lot of gamers. It takes timing prediction, and even that of a bit of a quick uh, trigger thing, but not too quick to pass through the level. This game was a groundbreaker for Capcom. And a few years down the line, the second would come out. Mega Man 2 or Rockman 2 in Japan. You see, in the original game, Dr. Wily escaped. He was not arrested. He fled. He would return with his own original eight robot masters. As the first six were developed by Dr. Thomas Light, they were known as DLN, Dr. Light's Numbers. But if you know it from Japan, it was known as Dr. Light's Numbers, as Dr. Light over there in the seas of Japan is known as Dr. Wright. Now, Dr. Wiley would return. The full name of Dr. Wiley is known as Dr. Albert Wiley. And, well, he was Dr. Light's assistant. Co-assistant to his scientific endeavors. But due to his own jealousy, pride, and hubris, we thought at first, he turned rogue and started focusing on trying to overshadow Dr. Light. Since the events of Mega Man 11, this has been retconned in such a way that makes more sense. It seems this was more deep-rooted, even more mysterious. This deep-seated hatred not only falls on that of Dr. Light, but the old, old, old entire robot society, scientific society foundation, as 
they were moving forward with robotics. But there was two projects. There was Dr. Lot 8's project of robot sentience. Semi-robot sentience. And then there was Dr. Wiley's double gear system. The double gear system would be able to make robot masters into literal superheroes. Or robots in general. Dr. Lot AIDS research would give robots the capability of personality with their own, own version of free choice, while still being limited to the coding. The Foundation chose Dr. Light's project over Dr. Wiley's. Dr. Wiley, for him, that was the last straw. He threw his double gear system on the ground and walked away, vowing revenge, and even that of vowing that he would overshow Dr. Light. His constant struggles to do so caused him to become obsessed, and even that, of overall crazy. It's because of this over-obsessive nature and crazy and madness to overshine and take all that was Dr. Light's success that drove Dr. Wiley to get the first six robot masters. By all definitions, Dr. Albert Wiley fell on his own blade. His own pride, selfishness, and hubris caused him to literally turn evil. And after the events of the first game, Dr. Wiley would go even further. By the second, he would create his own original eight robot masters all from Dr. Light's own personal files. This would be known now as the DWN series, Dr. Wiley numbers. There's another set of numbers known as <clears throat> DMK. Or uh, WMK, my mistake. Wiley Mega Killers. As these Mega Man Killer robots, there's only three to own, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. They did appear in the Game Boy games, but they would appear in Mega Man 9. Or was it 10? I forget. It's been a long time since I played those versions of the games. Humblest apologies. But after or the events of two, Mega Man would defeat the uh, eight robot masters, or if you read the uh, I, uh, IBM comics, I forget who makes the Mega Man comics. But people that make the Mega Man comics, Mega Man would just severely damage them and repro Dr. Light would reprogram them for a modern era to have more positive and effective functions. Rather you read the comics or you play the games, one thing remains the same. Mega Man defeats them. He gains their weapons through the weapons adaptation system. This is a system that allows him to scan and replicate Robot Master's main arsenal or weapons in general and give him a limited supply of energy in battle. He would fight Dr. Wiley's fortress and the mechanical monstrosities inside once again, confront Dr. Wiley, and then Dr. Wiley would flee underground. Mega Man would be deceived, thinking Dr. Wiley is an alien, but what was a mere alien was nothing more than a mere hologram. The hologram was weak against Bubble Land. One of the weakest weapons in the game, and the only weapon that can harm the hologram alien. After the hologram alien was defeated, Dr. Wily was exposed, but he would escape yet again into Mega Man 3. A new mechanic for Mega Man's capabilities have shown. Wait a minute. 
there is a cognitive error in the lore. As there was a movie released known as Blue Core Studios Mega Man. That is an overall, I wouldn't say mistake, but a misunderstanding from Mega Man 1 to 4. Allow me to try to explain. <laughs> you see, Mega Man Blue Core Studios fan film borrows from four franchises. Mega Man 1, Mega Man 2, Mega Man 3, and 4. Technically, 2 is not in there, but in a way it is. It still takes place in the main storyline of Mega Man, or Rockman, the original. But it borrows certain aspects and mechanics from the other games. There's even is is understandings or that of not knowing of how the robot masters work, including that of rock and roll. And somehow, Blues, aka the Pro Man, is thrown in the mix early. We'll get into Mega Man 3 here in a minute, as Proto Man showed up in 3 as the Brickman. He was never the Brickman. He was always the Protoman. Like this, the movie showed Blues early, if not a little bit too early. Entirely. This is a misunderstanding, but at the same time, this was meant to include all the characters into the story of this movie. That being Dr. Light, Dr. Wily, Mega Man, and AKA Rock, Roll, Protoma, and the original six robot masters. Sadly and greatly, the other two robot masters, Time Man and Oil Man, do not appear in this movie, as they're not technically part of the normal numbers. I will not be going into them for the sake of, obviously, relatively and staying on point. For you see in this movie, Mega Man, and Larry defeats Dr. Wily, defeats his copy, saves Roll, and Proto Man saves Mega Man. Something that does not happen in the original game. Or either that of Power Up, that I have played through an emulator through the PSP emulator. But despite all that, the other misconceptions are, can robot masters eat human food? I would like to say no. Lore wise, robot masters are incapable of eating or consuming human consumption, such as food, drink, or even that of uh, various other or uh, ingestible all consumptions. The reason they did this in the movie is quite simple. So the actors can have more time while also eating their breakfast and lunch on set. It was to fill in, well, to make it more, feel like more of a movie. This is a misunderstanding and misconception of what robot masters can do. It's because of this misconception that the movie is seen as false or not canon. Uh, yes and no. A lot of things were retconned. Even that of how Dr. Wiley turned heel has been retconned. And how he was influenced by his wife, Olga. The uh, digital wife. I don't know what to tell you. It's freaking weird. Like, why do people need a digital AI girlfriend or wife? That's weak. That's weird. But at the same time, I kind of get it. When your woman doesn't let you get it up in them, you need something. Now, obviously, I'm not okay with AI girlfriends or wives. But what y'all do with your lives is your business. It's not mine to 
ooh, say, or judge. It's just my feelings on it. Despite all this, Dr. Wily in this movie almost, well, does turn heel. Not only from his experiences with Dr. Light, but the lacking to try to find a way to overshine him. And Olga is the literal old turning point as she influences Dr. Wily's decision to take over to reprogram the robot masters and try to take over the world. In a way, she was the final turning point he needed to turn heel. Not the exact uh, full turning point, but close enough. And it's because of this. In this movie, there's two other problems. One in the final scene, spoilers by the way, Mega Man releases a charge shot to destroy the Wily Machine number one. In the original game, there is no charge shot. But in Powered Up, you can unlock the charge shot. I think they try to follow the Powered Up version of Mega Man in this movie. It cannot be ignored that uh, Powered Up had a great influence on Blue Core Studios' Mega Man the movie. While also Proto Man showing up and being a big brother is also a problem and a misunderstanding of the movie's overall. Oh, feel for the actual canon and lore of Mega Man, aka Rock Man. Let's get on to Mega Man 3. Dr. Wily returns. He makes his own three robot, eight robot masters. Yet again, he tries to take over the world, but he comes short. The new mechanic we get in this game, we slide. It ain't no slip and slide. We're sliding on the ground. As Mega Man releases thrusters from his feet to slide. It's an interesting function and much needed. For Mega Man at the time, this was considered groundbreaking in the games. This would not be the last groundbreaking mechanic we would get in the Mega Man games. After the events of 3, Dr. Wily, depending on the game or the comics, in 3 in the comics, Dr. Wily's arrested. But in the games, he escapes. Then we enter Mega Man 4, or Rockman 4. Rockman 4 is very simple. The feeling for Rockman 4 was they needed something new to the formula, something that stood out. Enter the charge shot. And the most famous meme known to man. Not a charge shot! That originally came from the X series, but from Vile. But it still holds that of canon memory for Mega Man 4. Now it is argued that Mega Man 4's charge shot is considered weird as the multicolored function and even that of the sound when it charges and fired were never used again. As there was backlash of the way it sound and feel. But why did they implement the charge shot? Well, there was another game made by Nintendo known as Metroid. Samus Metroid herself had the overall charge shot. This was Nintendo's mascot, a new one. Tried to over or shine Capcom's Mega Man. At least that's how I feel about it. Metroid is groundbreaking, and it borrowed a lot of mechanics from the Mega Man series. But despite all it borrowed, it still succeeded. I'm not going to lie, at this point in time in gaming, there was hardly anything original anymore for anybody to come up for originality. But charge shots were already a thing in sci-fi. It was only going to be a matter of time before they entered Mega Man or Rock Man. And as we were given it in Mega Man 4, we would also get a new character. 
from three, I forgot to mention, we got introduced to a new character. The good old dog boy, Rush. We got Rush Coil. We got Rush Jet. Two new functions. In Mega Man 4, the return of Rush Coil. The return of Rush Jet. And we got even the Marine Rush. But the new character in 4 was known as Beat. A blue little bird that loved to beat down its enemies by doing a good old flying tackle. The flying tackle would be a of this bud, Dr. Wiley's Achilles heel. As out stop hit me, out stop hit me, out stop hit me, out stop hit me. The bird would literally just keep hitting Dr. Wiley until oh his machines would be no more. You would have to collect the ladders across the stages to unlock beat. And I feel it was a nice time. The ladder spelt M E G A. Mega M A N. Man four. Collect these letters and you and number and you got beat. The most powerfulest character in the game. <laughs> Not gonna lie, that little bird can lurk or you get a licking and keep on ticking. And I forgot the update the uh, aim thing. The aim. Adding a about M E A women A M A N as a home. But I'm just chatting. That's the ordinary function. Here we go. Let me uh, double check that straight. Mm. Chatting as Mega Man as all. Well. Okay, there we go. That's better. That's better. I fixed it. I fixed it. Sorry, I was... You know, uh, Rachel just came back to base, and obviously, I got distracted a bit. I was so happy he came back. But despite all this, let's continue. Eventually, you get the letters of the bug bit, and it's the most powerful weapon in 4. But that's not the last time we would see of this little blue buddy. The little blue buddy would return in Mega Mountain 5. But wait, there's a split between the two fives. There's Mega Man 5 for Nintendo or the Famicom. Or Mega Man 5 for the Game Boy. Who Mega Man 5s? And there is a constant struggle between which one is canon. Well, a lot of fans and even Capcom side with obviously Mega Man 5 from the Game Boy being a canon. The Mega Man 5 for Nintendo is not considered canon to them for, from the Nintendo. It's really, to me, it's left up to your own retrospective and beliefs. I would like to find it interesting uh, what y'all find, obviously, canon. Is the Nintendo or the Famicons overall Mega Man canon to y'all? Or that of Mega Man 5s from the Game Boy? One had the Star Droids. The other one had Robot Masters. Like this, Mega Man 5 really didn't bring anything new to the formula. Five Robot Masters. Beat Return, Rush Return. 
We did get uh, uh, the, uh, you know, balloon for platforming. And we got the praying claw. What's that for? I forget. It does matter. It's been a while since I played these games. Five was black. But there was something wrong. Instead of at first, he thought it was Dr. Wily. Or at least, that's what we thought until the game came out. We found out after the events of four, somehow Protom went evil again. You see, after the events of three, Protom Man went good. And the plot of four is as follows Dr. Wily kidnaps a fellow doctor, scientist's daughter. Uh -oh. Somebody broke the law again. And her father tried to take over the world for Dr. Wily with his own inventions, his own robotic children. Yet again, Mega Man 1. Proto Man saved Kalinka. And that of overall, the hold over her father was broken. Dr. Wily would take a and try to fight again. In 5, we have what seems to be Proto Man as the main enemy. Sadly, we find out. Oh, right. It wasn't Rotom. It was something else. Something dark. More twisted. Something that can mimic Rotom Man's form. It should have been a dead overall clue to a lot of gamers when you hear this Proto Man's whistle compared to the original. It was darker and more twisted in nature. This was Dark Knight. Version 4. As there's four Dark Men, there's one that obviously he just runs around and shoots. There's the tank form. I forget what the other one is. Doesn't matter. They're all Dark Men in a way. But version 4 adopted the form of Protoman. When you enter Protoman's fortress, at the final stage, you fight what seems to be Protoman. Then, you hear a whistle. Real Protoman appears. And he fires upon the fake. Saving Mega Man and giving him an energy canteen to continue the fight. Eventually, Mega Man would defeat the evil Dark Knight. And then the next fight would begin as Dr. Wily was responsible the whole time. Who would have thought? Highly original. But, greatly, Mega Man would defeat Dr. Wily once again. But Dr. Wily would escape. Bowing would avenge, Dr. Wily would go into six. But there's a bit of cognitive issues with six, as it was never meant to be released globally. Capcom felt that six would be lacking in the markets of globally, even in the US. So they wanted to keep it region lock, region lock, keep six region lock. But luckily, Nintendo like went. Nah, uh fam. Nah, uh we still need some um, overall to sell our Nintendo Slim. So they overall ended up going all right. We're just gonna take Mega Man Six from Japan and bring it out into the U.S. with Nintendo Slim. May I add, Mega Man Six was the first Mega Man game I ever owned. But this wasn't the first one I ever played. And it's certainly not my favorite. But Mega Man 6 was groundbreaking yet again. 6 gave us two new powers. As Mega Man and Rush can become one with two new forms. These were known as adapters. There was two adapters. The Power Adapter. 
allowing Mega Man to throw out an energy punch. And then there was the Jet Adapter, allowing Mega Man to take flight into the skies, but robbing him of his slide function and even that of his charge shot. Be careful though, the Jet Adapter itself has a limited fuel supply. If you're not careful, you will fall to your doom, into a pit, into spikes, or into oncoming enemies. The limited fuel supply is almost instantly recharged soon after it's depleted, so use it sparingly. The power adapter has a major or er, quick fast charge shot, but its charge shot is very limited in range. Even in its normal attack, is limited in range as well compared to the normal Mega Buster. It is simply known for its pushing power when you throw the Energy Fist Charge Shot. It can throw other enemies into other enemies. It can even overall destroy certain objects in your way. Massive bricks, stone walls. Obviously, it is literally meant to be a wall destroyer and clear out terrain. On normal robots, it has a massive hit pool, but against robot masters, the charge shot still only does three damage, or three clicks of health. In this game, you find out that there's a, supposedly a new threat. For me, when I saw this old man, Mr. X, I thought to myself, bitch, you're just wily. Ain't no way you're not Dr. Wily. You put a gym on your head, you put a black toe over your body, you put a little face makeup on, and you go like, I'm Dr. X now. Bitch, you're Wily. <laughs> Straight up. That was Dr. Wily. No, despite Dr. Wily's best efforts, he could not keep up the shit. Six more robot masters will fall. Mega Man will get his adapters and head to Dr. X's stage, lay waste to it, expose Dr. X as Dr. Vibe, and finally take down Dr. Wily. And for the first time in gaming history of Dr. Wily and Mega Man, Dr. Wily would be arrested. Soon after, the next game would follow into Mega Man 7. Here we are introduced to a few new gimmicks. One, on the box cover art, you have a new robot known as Base with his own pet robot known as Ribbon. If it's not made clear all the main characters of the story, Rock, roll, blues, bass, dribble. They all are named after certain musical genres. Rock and roll are named after rock and roll, baby. Blues is named after blues. Can you sting me, blues? Bass and triple are named after, obviously, the bass and triple font the control functions of sound audio work for music and even voices. But despite all that, we're getting off track while still being on track. These two new robots will be made known on the cover art and on the first stage as we have an opening stage instead of just going straight into the robot masses. We have our first opening stage in the classic series. And Dr. Wily has activated four new robot masters. They are known as Jumpman, Beastman, Blood Bomb, and finally, Fishman. Each one of these robot masters has was attacking the overall prison, housing their master. And behind the scenes, Base was meant to buy time to 
keep Mega Man from going to the prison and stopping the Robot Masters. Mega Man would defeat the uh, and steamrolling robot. And eventually, Dr. Wily would make his escape. Throughout all this, Dr. Wily would appear in the Wily machine. What early e vehicle? It would have a new sound. It wasn't a wee 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 wee. That was really annoying in the original Nintendo. The audio was changed a bit, but it was still annoying. <laughs> As he would appear, he would lift his eyebrows, going up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, and literally just fly away. We would then be introduced to the robot masters in their stages. Amongst these stages, you can get the rush adapter parts. If you look hard enough. Also, if you hit the Cloud Man stage and find a secret area, Proto Man will give you a message. One of him. He would tell you, go to the fourth stage and use Flame Wheel. This is where you'll find Bit stuck in a little cage. But we're getting ahead of ourselves yet again. We would uh, defeat these four robot masses as Mega Man and head towards the robot museum. There we met this hopping giant fat ass clown. Shoot the head with the charge shot. Pops off. Boop! Hits the ground. You need to well on it. Otherwise, the body will pick it back up and attach it to its head. Do it enough times, the clown will go down. But Dr. Wily got what he wanted before then. He will recover the remains of the robot master known as Gutsma. As this will all come back later. We uh, get information of four new robot masters. After burning the forest down. And obviously. Heading towards. Sigma. The vampiric. Robot master. We would not only run into the base. But if you look hard enough. And unlock the secret area. And find the previous areas. Proto man has left his messages behind. You get to battle proto man. Defeat him? You only have one shot. One shot. If you cannot defeat Proto Man in this battle, you will not get the Proto Shield. The Proto Shield is considered one of the most overpowered items. As it blocks any incoming damage in front of you when you're not shooting with the Mega Buster. When you're shooting with your Mega Buster, it ends up on your back. And from your backside, you're also protected while shooting. Meaning that the Proto Shield makes you basically invincible wherever you point it. But sadly, that's the only function it serves. It's an overprotective shield to keep Mega Man from harm. Eventually down the stage, we'll run into base. Base would be damaged. He would tell base to go to Dr. Light's lab and give him the location. Where Dr. Light could repair him. Sadly, Base would run off with a copy, or at least the blueprints, of what is known as the Super Adapter. This is the combination of the Power Adapter and Jet Adapter into one. This Mega Man could fly. But then he had a charge shot that launched his arm forward. A limited range. If you go to Turbo Man stage and do a little digging, you'll find the arm part that extends the range that also makes it a homing weapon. It extends the range and it homes in on the nearest enemy. And then it comes back. Of course. So, after all that mentioned, when you go back to Dr. Light's lab, you find out the place is entirely wrecked. It's kind of like obviously a college frat party just happened all over inside the lab. 
and it went completely out of control. And so please try to overall handle the situation and calm everybody the freak down after our drunken bar fight inside the frat party. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. I'm not. Have y'all seen how out of control frat parties get at colleges? I haven't. I've only seen it in the movies. But that's enough for me. Anyways. Base wrecks the place to get the power adapter. Uh, technically a super adapter, my humblest apologies. He runs off with the super adapter. Our blueprints. And Dr. Wily creates his own super adapter for base. But before then, before we can go after Wily, Dr. Wily makes a phone call. Okay. He brags how all base and Tribble were made by his own cruel genius after the before the events of six as a backup plan as he knew eventually Mega Man and he was getting closer and closer to finally bringing him in. That dastardly Dr. Wily thought I had. And obviously the robot masters were made, so was base and triple. What Mega Man saw as a friend, or possibly ally, was a traitor. Eventually, we'll get into what happens afterwards, after the events of 8. As you see, Mega Man would fight base one-on-one -on -one again. This time, he has a hit pool. Base would be like after this next loss, I ain't done! And he would teleport away. Get the next area. Mega Man would meet him again. Base would be like, I'll show you who's superior and who is inferior. I am the superior model. I will always be the superior model, Mega Man. You are out of date. As him and Tribble would combine together into their own powered super adapter, they would fly him in battle. Base had unlimited flying ability, while Mega Man's was limited, but it was still enough. As Base's weakness to his super adapter was Mega Man's super adapter. Base would eventually lose control over the super adapter after you defeat him and realize, as of right now, we are rivals. From here on out, I will make sure to spend every waking moment of my life, my existence, to surpass you, Mega Man. No matter what, I will prove that I am the superior -er model. Okay. Mega Man would continue on through the fortress to fight Dr. Wily. Yet again, Dr. Wily would escape. Enter Mega Man 8. Probably one of the most controversial in the series. For at least myself. 8 was a unique spin. No energy tanks. No weapon tanks. No special tanks. There was a difficulty spike. But it seems this was on purpose. But as it was supposed to hit the Sega Dreamcast. PlayStation was like. We want in, but we want something unique. Capcom be like, okay, we'll do something unique. Do something unique. Want something for you? No? Something for, something unique for Dreamcast. Dreamcast would see the return of two robot masters. Woodman and Cutman. While the PlayStation one will have its own, own you know, side bosses. PlayStation players really got cocked on that one. I will admit. Despite all this, I still feel the PlayStation game was pretty good. Never played the Dreamcast myself. I did play a variant of it on the GameCube version. Not bad. One Man Cutman's redesigns pretty good. Based off of Mega Man Power Fighters almost, just about their updated design. 
Not bad, not good either. I feel so. But despite all this and my gripes, not bad, not bad, not bad at all. Dreamcast had a more superior soundtrack as well. Okay. Okay. I, I, I can see what you did there. Okay. Okay. While having two returning robot masters, we would also be introduced to Duo. An alien robot. From outer space! Someone that was looking to defeat an evil that crash land onto Earth. Filled with evil energy. Dr. Riley would recover this evil energy and put it in his own robots, but he would keep the main core. He would find out whoever has this main core, his wicked, selfish intent and desires would spread like a virus across the planet, affecting all forms of life, whether it be organic or robotic, and making them just like the person that has the original core. The longer this energy stayed on Earth, the more threatening trouble it would have for everyone there. The Mega Man would defeat the or robot masters and take these evil energy cores as Duo would be going under repairs and even that on life support. He would be wake up after uh, Mega Man and Dr. Light would try to go find Dr. Wily's location. This game has the weakest voice acting I've ever heard. Now, the voice actor for Mega Man 8 of Mega Man, aka Rock, is also the voice actor of X from X4. Voice. I like that. But Dr. Light's voice is so atrocious. When we fought, uh, and those energy signals will find Dr. Wily. That is some of the weakest ass voice acting I've ever heard of an old man. Sound like the guy literally tripped, bit his tongue off, and had to show up to work the same day. The voice actor, Dr. Light's voice is. Bass's voice, in my eyes, is not bad. I will admit, it sounds pretty cool. Pretty dope. Sounds super serious and edgy. You'll pay for this insult, Mega Man. I swear. Eventually, obviously, defeat another eight robot masters. After defeating Duo in battle, Duo will find out that, oh, you're filled with just filled energy, just like me. And they would find Dr. Wily's fortress deep within the earth. Duo could not enter because of a barrier of evil energy, preventing him from um, recovering what was in there. Mega Man, and be like, obviously, thank you for saving me because, uh, well, we find out Mega Man can feel pain. As he does the loudest little kid scream I've ever heard in my life. Poor bastard. Duo would chop off the arm by literally doing a meteor impact smash. An astro smash into it. And then cut off the head and follow up with literally launching himself right in through the robot's core. Robot's body. Taking the evil energy core right from its chest. And it literally just falls in the liquid hot magma. So now after they find out, oh, he can't enter in. I should have been more, more direct with how all the story follows. Mega Man would soon follow up. Feeding. Unsearchman, okay? I'm Aquaman, but you can call me Handsome Boy. Let's see here. I'm Swordman. Flame sword. And I'm Astro Man. These four robot masters didn't have the dark energy cores inside of them, but they were still quite destructive and deadly. The last one we would find out, base would adopt into his body and get supercharged of evil energy. 
but that's later on. Mega Man would finally find Dr. be able to enter Dr. Wily's fortress, defeat the robots inside, and even defeat Base once again. This is where Base realized all Dr. Wily's plans and even that ad of technological prowess were weak compared to him, he believed, and he was vastly superior. He vowed at this moment to not only surpass Mega Man, but to prove Dr. Albert Wiley wrong. That everything Wiley builds is junk in the trunk. And he was all Dr. Wiley needed. But even that, Big Man would fight Dr. Wiley again, only to fall into a trap. But, bum 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 There comes Duel with a tackle attack. Releasing Mega Man and from the trap, from the uh, energy cannon trap, Mega Man would defeat Dr. Wily. But sadly, Dr. Wily would escape. And what seems to be Mega Man's last moments almost happen. Until Duo shows up. He sees the past victories, good deeds, and even triumphs Mega Man and pulls out the dark energy. The dark energy was finally dispersed. Duo would leave the planet, never to be seen in the main timeline ever again. Unless you count, you know, Mega Man Racer or whatever that is, Power Racer. Um, not canon by the way, FYI. It's just a fun little race game. Mega Man 9 and 10 are unique. But we need to talk about what took it so long for 9 and 10 to come out and why they are the way they are. You see, after a while, Capcom burnt out the fa burnt out the world on Rockman and Mega Man. As they came out with Mega Man, Mega Man X, Mega Man Legends, Mega Man Star Force, Mega Man EXE, and the world was getting tired of the different variants of Mega Man. They would go on deep hiatus. Keiji Inafune himself would leave the company. One of the greatest fathers of Mega Man, I will admit. And Capcom would become lost and distant with the franchise. Eventually, they were to give the uh, creating rights of Mega Man to Play Arts. Mega Man 9 and 10 would be developed quite poorly, if you ask me. 9 would rob Mega Man of the charge shot function. I feel it would be uh, very important to add that. While also leaving behind some mystery. A secret not yet found. To this day... Nobody has found the secret. One of the biggest mysteries in the Mega Man cabinet, I truly believe, is one of Indy Create's biggest trolls. I do not believe, I believe, in every fiber of my being, that there is no secret in Mega Man 9. It is possibly a big, giant troll move to keep people playing 9 to find the secret. Nobody has ever reported the secret. Nobody knows what it is. Nobody has found it, or shown recordings, or even talked about it. I believe it's one of the biggest troll moves in gaming. They would also say there's a secret in 10. Yet again, this is indie creates being trolls. But there is something unique on Mega Man 9. You can either play Mega Man or Bass, Rock or Blues. In 10, you have multiple choice. You can either play Mega Man, Protoba, or Bass. It's a unique thought for different variants of stories and gameplays. In nine story, we run into the Roboenza, a virus that drives robots mad. 
Some people believe Robo Inza was the beginning of the obviously Wiley virus. I'm in this camp. I think it was the stepping stones to the Wiley virus that would soon in the X series become as the Sigma virus. It's also the stepping stones to Zero Zone Core. Model Omega. Be relative. That would become known as Zero in the X series. But we're getting ahead of ourselves yet again. Despite all this, I will admit, I'm in the camp of the Robo Inza being that of the stepping stones of the foundation for the Wiley virus. Dr. Wiley himself created the Robo Inza. And he released it. He may he, he did believe that the virus was made by some other means. To our main cast of heroes. Roll would fall ill to this virus, and Mega Man would do everything he can to save his little sister. Like a responsible older brother. Mega Man is. And Mega Man always will be. He goes try to ooh, stop these robots that were once Dr. Light's creation. Sadly, almost by the end of the game, you find out that Roll is succumbing to the virus. But luckily, after the events of Nine and Dr. Wily's defeat, in the hospital, Dr. Wily leaves behind the cure. Why did he do this? For what reason? We still do not know. Maybe there's some shred of hope in humanity in Dr. Wily at this time. Maybe he respects robots more than he does humans. We'll never know. Capcom has never given us that answer. Not yet, anyways. After the robot oh ends the virus, Tim would come along, Dr. Wily be up to his old shenanigans again, and escape again. Then hope came from the classic series. In 2017, a new game came out. Mega Man and Lilith. Mega Man was promised to be coming back in the classic series. In this point in time, Mega Man itself is on hiatus. The entire series has not seen a new game. Unless you count Mega Man and dive online and offline. I did like online. It was good. I could care less for offline. I heard Nebula Joy's version of the game will be canceling its service as well. It was only a matter of time. They did have a nine-year contract. It seems that contract has met its expiration date. Called it. But, uh, yeah. He is made an 11. Introduced the double gear system. As uh, I previously mentioned before, the former story we were led to believe would be retconned. Retconned as a whole. In a unique fashion. We would find the true meanings of why Dr. Wiley and, and Rogue. And. Obviously. In the classic series we have not gotten a new game. In the X series. X stands for infinite potential in scientific terms, by the way. It's a scientific formula meaning infinite potential. While Omega stands for the end of growth in scientific formulas. We would be introduced to two new characters. It is commonly thought that X is Mega Man a more advanced form 
this is not true. X is considered that of an old, not old, advanced or alternate version of Mega Man, but his own person. Dr. Light came up with a new system to give X the capability of full automated free will. I will admit the system X was in to so, make sure that the free will program would not get out of hand was a good idea. What was supposed to be 10 years ended up being 100. X would be buried underground. Dr. Light passed away before X completion. And eventually, X would be sealed away for 100 years. Dr. Kane would find the remains of Dr. Light's lab and uncover X. Beforehand, he already uncovered Zero. X would be a new spin. At least, we thought Zero was discovered first. That also would be retconned. As X was found first, and Zero was found later by Sigma. The story is as goes. Kane finds Light's lab, finds X. Creates a new era of robots known as Reploids. Replicated robots. Reploids. They are all replicated from one robot with infinite potential. That would be X. Sadly, massively produced these things that did not have the overall pleasure of constantly being tested for over a hundred years in an advanced algorithm program like X was in the capsule. This is what made X stand out compared to the rest of the Reploids. This system was to make sure X did not go maverick, would not turn against humanity. Dr. Light always wanted X to live the life of a normal life. He did never wanted X to fight for the future, but he always thought it was a possibility. That's why Dr. Light gave X the X Buster in a way to defend himself in fear that he would have to fight once again. Eventually, Sigma and his troops would find out that there would be a virus leaking from a facility deep within a mountain. Sigma would go to this hidden location that was a secret fortress housing the remains of Project Omega, aka Hero. Sigma would go into battle against Zero, as previous Maverick Hunters went there to investigate, but no word would come from the location. All contact would be cut off. Zero would go in contact against Sigma. Sigma would never face a robot like this before, a Reploid. Sigma met his match, just about until a good right hook right into Zero's cranium, fragmenting the crystal, solar crystal. The crystal itself was unique. It not only gave Zero power from the solar energy he would absorb, but it also encased the Wily virus that would obviously keep him under Wily's overall cognitive control. Like Freaky Friday. <clears throat> Personalities be switched, yo. As Sigma's moralities of good would go to Zero, and Zero's moralities of evil go to Sigma. Switchy Swappy. A whole mess up jalopy. Sigma oh, would succumb to the Wily virus transforming it into the Sigma virus. He would take over or that and influence eight Maverick Hunters. And they would start attacking the world. All in the name 
of Sigma and the New World, as they felt that humans were inferior, reptoids were superior. I cannot stress this enough. Such a concept has been seen a million times before. It's because of this, Sigma started a full-on war and rebellion that literally went on for years and finally ended in the Elf Wars. As the Mother Elf would not only absorb the Sigma virus, but contain it. It was supposed to cure the Sigma virus, but instead it did a different function as the Sigma virus was too strong, I would like to believe. It would absorb and contain the Sigma virus and the Mother Elf would become corrupted. The Elf Wars would happen after the Sigma Wars. The Mother Elf would be contained by X. Enter Mega Man Zero. Zero at this time would be locked away for study and to find a way to contain the remaining virus inside of him while finding a cure. They would also develop a second new body as the first body would be taken by Dr. Well, or stolen, and turned into Omega. Zero would get a copy body, and he would be put it in that, put in that, and sealed away. Ciel herself would find the remains of the lab, Maverick Hunter lab, awaken Zero, only the oh, oh, captured by Copy X's forces. And Zero would get his Z Saber from X through a computer. Don't ask me how that works, it just does. As the spirit of the real X gives Zero back his Saber. Zero would finally defeat this mechanoid with the Z Saber. And then he would have to take on Poppy X's loyal servants. Each and every one of them would fall. X would move on. Zero would move on to fight Copy X. Copy X would be defeated. Into the next game, a new threat. As your allies that you just joined, their leader is the new threat. Spoilers, by the way, of Zero Series, the second game. Spoilers are going to be everywhere for this one. I'm not going to apologize. You've either played the ga Mega Man games or you haven't. This leader er, had secret intentions to find the remains of the Mother Elf from the uh, Mother Elf children. Find them. Use them to find the Mother Elf or the Dark Elf. And become the new uh, ruler of the new world. How original. This is man or reploid or manploid or whatever he is. I don't know. But a uh, fall to zero. Zero oh, in the next game would finally meet his double ganger, Omega. And Dr. Well would make his return. You would fight Dr. Well and Omega. Omega will fall, but it's not the last you hear of him. Mega Man 4, well, will return, so will Omega. Uh, very well. By the end of 4, we see the end of the X series in classic. As. Well. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, okay? Zero dies. He dies. What the fuck? That's it. Story would pick up in the Legends, where obviously Mega Man Volnut is called in Japan Mega Man Trigger. He's known as the unit known as Mega Man Trigger. He's known as a digger in this game. What is the job of the digger? Dig underground in, in that of hidden temples to find the secrets of the past while also trying to find something called 
the legendary treasure. This legendary treasure promises great power, the new era. An endless power source. In this world, technology is powered by something called refractors. Imagine and giant crystals infused with energy, basically. These power all modern and day conveniences. Such as the ships flying ships called flutters. I actually like that name. Our main forecast in the original oh, oh, Mega Man Legend series here in the US are what is called Luck and Rush. Or something like that, I forget. No, Rockman Dash. Yeah, Rockman Dash. In Japan. Our core cast consists of Megamon Volnut, Roll Casket, Bat Casket. The main heroes of our story. The main villain. Or more like, you know, uh, the Team Rocket. I'm going to be honest, they're like the Team Rocket. You have that of Tron Bond, the daughter er, of the luxurious Bond family. You have Baby Bond. He's literally a giant rock walking robo baby. Then you have Diesel Bond. <laughs> I'll get you yet, blue boy. Just you wait. I've always loved that voice. It was so iconic. And so goofy and loopy, I'm not gonna lie. The main villain of this arc, there is none really. You just gotta save catalogs from a legendary threat that you come across and woke up. Juno. Juno is like, after 10,000 years I have slumbered. Who dares awaken me? Oh, it's you, idiot. Mega Man Trigger. Mega Man would have to defeat Vault. Well, Mega Man Trigger would have to defeat e Juno Trigger. But sadly, it's too late. The space station known as Israelium was about to send its workers to purge everyone on catalogs. Okay. But luckily comes the other character I didn't mention earlier. Mega Man's companion. E -e -e, name's Data. E -e -e, monkey. Robot Monkey Pal. That whole house is all Mega Man Trigger's memories and main purpose. Data would literally shut down the system and tell it, hey, send those bitches back up there. We don't need them right now. We say it stop. Goes confirm sending bitches back home. There it goes back into the giant space station out in space. Mega Man Legends 2, we would also be in introduced back to the Bonds. But after the original game, we find out they gone prank bankrupt, yo. They couldn't pay their taxes. Meme format, by the way, for that reasoning, and that reasoning alone. You couldn't pay their taxes, so they had to say, okay, we understand we can't pay our taxes and our fines for our land and what everything we own. What can we do to make it up to you? These two new guys, I forget their names, they're like, you owe us money. Gonna find, help us find this legendary treasure before that blue boy does. He's a ball and goes, wait a minute, blue boy? What you talking about? They go, Blue Boy, gun on the arm. Got a talking monkey, blonde haired chicken, and old dude, and a giant overall flying ship bigger than before. Bonds go like, Mega Man got rich? Oh, FYI, it seems Tron has a huge, you know, like, a, like, Sundere crush on Mega Man. She dreams about him and her doing bike bank heist. 
Girl's got to screw loose. Just going to say that here. Trombon's got to screw loose. Uh, back on point. So they can't pay the bills or the taxes. So they got to help these other two guys get the treasure before Mega Man does. They find out. Ain't no treasure. Ain't no treasure. The treasure? Be a weapon. Weapon to destroy all life. And we were dumb enough to wake it up. This threat is known as Luna. Or Yuna. My mistake. Her name is Yuna. Um. I got about stealing one from Final Fantasy. Next two. But hey, that's just my thoughts on that. Um, Yuna is what is known as a carbon. As a matter of fact, all life on the planet are known as carbons. There was one human left. It was known as the Master. The Master paid his life. And had Mega Man shut off the facility, e the space station, for all life to live. Mega Man would soon be robbed of his memories by Yuna and launched to Earth. Where he would be found by Roll and Beryl Casket and their family. And Roll's mother and father. They would treat Mega Man as their own child. Call him Mega Man Walnut. And even more so, in this story, you not only roll run into Roll's father that doesn't even know that that's his daughter, because he can't remember as his memories were robbed by Yuna in the space colony. But you also run out, run into Mommy Dearest. Mommy Dearest, not like okay in the head. Doesn't even remember her own freaking daughter. By the end of the game, defeating Yuna, you find out. Hey man, be stuck on the moon. He's the new man on the moon. And he has Roll's mama for our company. When are we going to get Legends 3? We'll get into that in a bit. So by the events of Legends 3, we find out Legends 2. Hey man, stuck on the moon. Along with Roll's mama. Roll and everyone else is back down on Earth. Trying to figure out how we're going to get them down from there. The only a capsule. Oh, ship is all the way up there on the moon. How are we going to get them down? That's all we get. That's all we get. The Capcom, that's all we're worth. No Legends 3 was being developed. But they came up with some poor, sad excuse of why it was canceled. But I will admit, them blaming the fans for sending all those art submissions is one of the laziest goddamn excuses I've ever heard of. You can understand my anger and disappointment. Despite all this, Mega Man. Legends 3 was cancelled. Real reason is not quite known. All we got was that poor excuse of a reason. I believe it's not even canon of a reason, really. Fight this. We would get eventually Mega Man, EXE, and Star Force. A new take on Mega Man, a new story, a new purpose, a new feel. Not gonna lie, I like the Mega Man EXE series, but I like Star Force better. I like Star Force better. Star Force will never get a definitive answer. I forgot to mention Mega Man ZX and ZXA. Who cares? That's how I feel on it. Who freaking cares? Banger soundtrack though, but I really don't care for it. As a whole, because the story is so freaking convoluted.
really could care less for. It was just trying to capitalize on like the ZX series. I mean the Zero series. The build for it. I get it plays before Legends. It's supposed to play into the Legends series a lot. But uh, I just makes me cringe. Makes me cringe. If you ask me, you can do better without it. Just switch up the music. Mega Man X3 Zero's cover. So now y'all know all the different games of the classic X Legends Zero. Don't care for ZX. Mega Man X got its collection. All this slice. Let's get it on. So, yeah. My history with Mega Man. We are literally an hour and 30 minutes in after all that. Glad I cut out Star Force and EXE for now. We'll talk about them in a future day. As the EXE series is complete, Star Force, on the other hand, is not complete, I will mention. The story of Star Force is not complete. The story of Classic, the story of X, the story of Legends, ZX, and yeah. So, my history with Mega Man. I started playing Mega Man around the age of seven, but I knew about it beforehand. Around the age of five, we were on the run from my biological father as he was a huge prick. Not gonna sugarcoat it. Guy was violent as hell, a well-known felony criminal, and an asshole. There's a difference between a genuine asshole and an asshole like me. I'm an asshole because I tell the truth and I tell it how it is. Even if I make mistakes. His asshole or a... Well... Demonic in nature. Real demonic. That's how I put it. We would be visiting some cousins and I got my first taste of Mega Man of Mega Man 3 as they were playing it on their Nintendo. They were fighting over... Oh! Like... I died to Needle Man. It's my turn. You lost. My turn. My cousin, my other cousin, was like to my to uh, his brother. They were fighting. Their mother like, go out there and play in the cornfield with your cousins. We ended up missing lunch because of them, because they left me and my sister out in the cornfield. We're stuck out there for about an hour as they played a huge prank on us. Went back in the house, started playing the Nintendo system. They blamed us because uh, of it. What the frick? We ended up missing lunch. We went back to the apartment we were staying in in California. I would get my first taste for Mega Man at age 7. I would rent it from a local rental service at a gas station. Mega Man 2. Mega Man 2 was my first. But it's not my favorite. First of the X series would be Mega Man X2. I actually loved that game. The first new version of it would be Mega Man 7 from the previous other store that I rented Mega Man 2. Mega Man X2 was at a different one right next door. Out of the three games, I loved 7 more. I still do to this day. Mega Man 7 in the classic series is my absolute favorite. No one will change my mind. I will admit. Another thing I wanted to mention is throughout the years of playing the games, I found out there was a cartoon series. Mega Man, made by Ruby Smith Studios. 
It was a thing. Left off on a cliffhanger. I found out a few months later through an interview on television of what happened on the news. A Ruby Spears company went out of business because of the voice actor union and um, Schmiel. Along with obviously a like lack of production and time and resources. Obviously. It was a multi-layered thing. It was not only the voice actor strike of 2000, I mean, uh, 1994 to 1995, but it was also that uh, the uh, uh, multi-reasons in the studio of finances, production value, policies, it was multi-layered. We, I found this out on an interview and that's why saw on a Saturday a.m. was, you know, uh, had quite the obscure ending. Mega Man and never got his second season of Ruby Spears Mega Man, and various other projects were canceled, if not totally forgotten. FYI, by the way, I don't know if the Mega Man community knows this, but I know this all too well. From that interview, it was stated that the scripts. And the visual edits were completed for the second season. They were never voiced. Meaning that the scripts and the visual recordings of the second season are out there. They can be found. Nobody knows where they are. Some have talked that it's been bought out in an auction by some rich prick. A uh, uh, massive company bought the remains of Ruby Spear Studios and the show, and is planning never to release it. Capcom may have it in their overall vault. Disney might as well. Who knows? All we know is, at least I know from that interview, the second season was scripted and edited into visuals, but it was never voice act and released. One of the biggest mysteries of Mega Man right now, and always has been, is the location of the second overall season of Mega Man Ruby Spears. It's out there, and somebody can find it, do what you can to bring it out to the world. We need this. I was devastated after uh, we saw that Mega Man was left in a cavern. Supposedly dead in an alternate timeline or offline, technically. That's where the show ended. I noticed the show in 1998 when it aired on the U.S. Network. Yep, good old USA Network. It aired there for a while along with Robocop, Street Fighter, and various other shows. That was my first Mega Man cartoon experience. My first, like, game I ever got for the PS1. On a Christmas day, I got a PS1, my very own, and I got Mega Man 8 and Mega Man X4. Oh, I played the shit out of X4. I loved it. One of my favorite characters will always be Iris. I kind of have a soft spot for Iris another. Mommy, bank me with that rapier. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna lie. Iris another mm, saucy as fuck. Oh, oh, I don't care. If she's a robot. I don't care. If she's a reptoid. Okay, no, no. Give me in there, coach. Give me in there. Get me in there. Okay, give me in there. <laughs> give me in there. I'll show her a good time. I'll be your big brother. <laughs> that is unhandy, fuck. But despite all that. 
she appeared in X Dive and she'll probably never appear again. And any continuity. Makes me sad. Makes my pee pee cry! Such a potential for a beautiful character. Wasted! Wasted, oh my gosh, again. Why? Mm. Why? Now, my experience with Mega Man, one of my favorite gaming franchises of all time. I love the lore, I love the games, I love the field, I love the shoot, I love to equip, get equipped, I love to adapt, I like the armors, whole nine yards. I'll never stop loving playing Mega Man. I'm one of those old time faves of the Blue Bomber. So, is there a way for our voice to be heard? Is there a hope for Capcom to develop a new game? We need to get into the understanding of why they haven't. It seems their house is like a house of cards right now with the franchise. We had one new father that was in head of the project called it quits. We had another father, called it quits. And now the franchise is in a hiatus. Right now all we're getting is a bunch of collaborative efforts with other or gotcha games, or games in general, and obviously collections. I will admit the collections are a nice touch, but it's not technically what we need. What we need right now is not something completely new either. A new ooh, type of game in the story is redundant. What I feel right now, we need to have our voice heard with Capcom and be patient, while also having our voice for heard constantly, without a doubt. Right now, what they need to do is complete the story of Classic X, Legends, and even that of possibly DX, and get up on Star Force. I do love Star Force. It's a good series. It was never bad. It was a good series. And I will admit, it could still be a good series. They would have to re-innovate the graphics and somewhat of the formula of it to give it a better feel. I understand that. But I think Star Force should have a proper conclusion. Next, I'm going to mention, obviously, the... That's the only way we can expect anything out of Capcom. Being patient and constantly having our voice heard. Talking about the Blue Bomber. Obviously, bring you notice that we need a new game is important. I will admit Shadow Rock and the Network Corner does a lot of good work as they bring forth obviously a lot of cell phone games and spin-off games. I myself like Mad Rikes' RPG version of the Mega Man X series. I get this guy is considered not a good person, but you can't argue with how the game feels and plays, alright? It's actually pretty good. Sadly, you can't download it on Windows 11. It's only Windows 10 and below. I don't think he will upgrade it from Windows 11. That which my card PC runs. So that game is going to be like outdated around next year. And nobody will be able to play it on modern PCs. Um. Way to go, you soulless fuck. But even more so, I wanted to mention next is obviously the my top ten favorite Mega Man games, as goes. Number ten! Mega Man X8! I actually like X8. It was good. I feel it could have had a lot more and be a little bit better and have a bit more of a plot line. 
Well, obviously you're having more features. Mega Man X6 at number nine. X6 is a difficult game for beginners, I'm not gonna lie. But eventually, we, or you can protect, protect where all the viruses are and stop them from corrupting the Mavericks. You can easily get through the game. It's not meant for speedrun. It has difficulty gap for a reason. At number eight, we have none other than Mega Man 6. Mega Man 6, I really do like it. It gave us the first form of adapters and made it where, or obviously, Dr. Wily was first arrested. I absolutely love 6. It's at number 8. Number 7. Mega Man on the Battle Network 2. Mega Man Battle Network 2, I actually enjoy. I'm currently playing through it on live streams. Ashi E, or like the women beforehand, were playing it, but both Ashis is quit. The first one quit because of her boyfriend punching her in the gut. And now is on the hunt for her and she's in protective custody. The second one I had to let go because she's like either a hundred uh, backers on streams with that uh, from over 500 subscribers. Only way I'm going to stream. I told her that's not how it's going to work. You either stream or you're out. And she said, what's your decision? I can go, you're out then, babe. I let this woman go. Right now, Ashi's model will be put on hold from streams. I will use those voice changer that the previous Ashi used. Because she didn't want to have her actual voice heard. Due to her boyfriend being the way he was. Being almost completely pro anti-technology. It was Amish, I don't know what to tell you. And that of obviously Yeah. I will continue to use a voice changer that she used. She also developed the app for the E obviously Discord. The community Discord I have. The app's supposed to look deceptive. Where obviously I know how they see a deceptive app like this dangerous. But I will be reprogramming the app very soon. Where, like, if you're 18 years or younger on Discord, you will not be allowed on the Discord. Fair enough. This is all because of what I've come to realize. That kids are becoming more out of control. And more enforcement needs to be brought upon my Discord, or the community Discord, and the streams and the videos. All of it. And the repercussions as well has made me realize even more, or from my first controversy of somebody that was a child groomer that was always so being groomed by children. And the doctor disrespect uh, thing made me realize that children are becoming more and more out of control. So there will be an 18 years or older tag on my Discord, and ruling very soon will be enforced by the app. Next, I want to mention obviously he is how I feel about the Mega Man community. As of right now, the Mega Man community sees me e as a threat to their overall well-being. As they're holding on to their head cannons and thinking I'm nothing but trouble for them. An issue, a problem, a threat. As of right now, do I think peace can be achieved between me and the Mega Man community? No. Simply because they do not want to make right with me. I want to make right with them. They don't want to do it with me. And it's because of this. I am fully to what I believe. As a VT myself, slash 3D VTuber. The Mega Man community is a threat 
to my community, and even more so, other VTs. I don't think, in my own, own thoughts and opinions, that the Mega Man community can be trusted. I don't think they'll be healthy for the VT community, and I don't think overall they're good for or anything but their own community and the Mega Man franchise. I believe we should stay separate and not be in communications. The Mega Man community is a threat not only to my community, but I fully believe they're a threat to the VT community or VTE platform. Rather it be 2D or 3D. I see the Mega Man community a threat at, to the VT the platform. And I humbly ask them to stay in their own park. Stay in their own version of the net and stay away from the VTs. They have nothing to offer us. They have nothing to give us. They have nothing to show for us. I myself right now am doing everything I can to stand out from other VTs while also oh, trying to help them in their own issues. While reapplying myself and my overall position amongst them. I want to say my feelings and thoughts and retrospects of Capcom and Mega Man right now, there is hope. As High Max once put it, there's hope. There's hope. But as far as them being a helping hand in the BT community, it's no use! So, yeah, I don't think they have anything to offer or anything to show for the VT platform. Or me as a whole. Mega Man community is beyond helping. They're beyond uh, reasoning with and they're beyond um, obviously being any form of obviously e can I would have to say form of positive effect on the VT community or the VT platform I'm the same they have no place here on my community, and they have no place on the VT platform. Stay in your corner. I see you as a threat and a problem to VTs, including that of the community I'm making. This goes to Shadow Rock and everyone on the Mega Man and corner. Stay in your corner. If you do not want to make peace, then you have no place in the VTE -E form of things. That's just my thoughts, retrospects, and feelings. They have proven that uh, they cannot be trusted. They're highly irrational. And even more than that, more weak and fragmented due to Capcom's lack there of collaborative feel. For obviously the, the, you know, anything. Thank you all for joining me on this overall journey. As I talked about my overall thoughts, feelings, experience, and knowledge of Mega Man as a whole. From Capcom to Mega Man to the Mega Man community. Overall, I will continue to enjoy Mega Man. I will continue to enjoy uh, being a VT in 3D, and even more so, 
I will enjoy continuing living my life with my future beloved, and even that of entertaining the masses. I will have to say this. Recently, there's been a collab between Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis and that of Capcom's very own Monster Hunter. I want to close this on a positive feel. The floodgates are now open for collaborative efforts between Square Enix and Capcom. Do I think Mega Man will have a collab with Final Fantasy? It's within Ever Crisis. I believe that the two series do not mix. I believe overall that they should not mix, and the collaborative efforts between Ever Crisis and Final Fantasy VII, the Gacha Game, and the Mega Man series have nothing to overall all perfectly merge with. But if I may. I do believe that uh, the series could perfectly mix with something such as Devil May Cry or possibly even Resonance Evil. As Capcom is the main developer of these two games. Or even Breath of Fire. I think Breath of Fire would be more of a more excellent choice for the next collaborative effort for Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis. Even more so, Devil May Cry. As fiends are another way of saying a demonic monster in Final Fantasy. Even more so, zombies have appeared in Final Fantasy games beforehand. They are known to be there. Mummies, zombies, plagues, yada yada yada, forbiddens. They exist. So a thing like Resident Evil is not too far off. I think there's potential there. For Resident Evil, Devil May Cry, and even Breath of Fire. But as far as Mega Man uh, mixing with Final Fantasy, Ever Crisis, or Final Fantasy as a whole, is too far of a stretch. I don't think it'll ever be a collaborative effort, because it doesn't give off the proper affiliation to feel between the two. Thank y'all so much. I hope to see something in Final Fantasy Ever Crisis of a collab of Devil May Cry, Breath of Fire, or even that of Resident Evil. I have been your beloved Commander Devon Lionheart of Seed Next Gen Streaming. July 12th will be Rachel's debut. I will be alongside her. And along with that, I have much work ahead of me. For her appearance. From her lore comic of how Lojo created her, to even that of her debut, and her obviously seed personnel file, all released on the internet within the next two weeks. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. I am cutting transmission. Until next time, my loyal cadets, I have been Commander Devin Lionheart, and the stream will pick up back tomorrow, as according to my, uh, no, ledger, or like, no, what's supposed to be tomorrow is none other than... Final Fantasy VII Rebirth Tuesdays. And we'll continue Rebirth tomorrow at 11 a.m. 1 p.m. U.S. Central Standard Time. Mega Man Battle Network for next week has moved to Wednesday. Good night, good morning, or afternoon, wherever you are on Earth. 13 in the Milky Way galaxy in the southern hemisphere of our reality, or at least mine. Until next time, my loyal cadets. <laughs>